Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Northwestern University student panel this afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm super excited to have you all here, and we hope to answer as many of your questions as we can this afternoon. So just to start, we're going to do some introductions. You'll get to meet all the lovely panelists I'm here with today. Then we'll do a quick introduction to Northwestern. I'll give you a streamlined presentation of what you would get if you came to our Northwestern campus. And then we'll try and answer all of your questions. So please make sure you're putting all your questions in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. So to start, my name is Simone. I'm a current graduate counselor at our Northwestern Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I was also a senior counselor. I recently graduated from Northwestern. Um, I studied anthropology, environmental policy, and sustainability, and I loved it so much I'm sticking around for another year to get my master's in sustainability and energy in our McCormick School of Engineering. And when I was on campus, I was also heavily involved in research. But next, I want to hear a little bit from Val. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm Val. Um, I'm originally from Mexico City. I'm studying mathematical methods in the social sciences and economics. I also have a Kellogg certificate in financial economics. Uh, when I'm not doing stuff in the classroom, I am a senior admissions counselor, and I'm also involved in Northwestern University Dance Marathon. Um, and I will popcorn to Emily. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm a rising fourth year studying computer science in the McCormick School of Engineering. I'm also pursuing a Kellogg certificate as well. And out of, out of the classroom, I'm involved as a peer tutor for engineering classes for first year students. And I'm also involved um, in the Society of Women Engineers um, in a committee that's devoted to raising conversation around uh, gender bias within McCormick and in industry. And I will kick it off to Ella. Hi everyone, I'm Ella. I'm from Summit, New Jersey, and I'm a fourth year studying learning and organizational change in the School of Education and Social Policy with a double major in um, SESB, I'm not SESB, sorry, um, Weinberg studying legal studies. And when I'm not giving tours or in classes, I am working as a research assistant studying fake news. And I will pop it over to Nolan. Hi everyone, my name is Nolan. I am from right here in beautiful Evanston, Illinois. I am a rising fourth year student studying theater and political science. I'm receiving a certificate in music theater. Uh, when I'm not on panels talking to people like you, uh, you can catch me on uh, the word stage performing in musicals and as a senior admissions counselor. And I would like to pass it off to Jania. Hi everyone, I'm Janae. I'm a rising third year from Detroit, Michigan. Um, and when I'm not in the classroom or doing panels like this, I'm a part of Supplies for Dreams, which we mentor um, Chicago public school students and help them develop life skills. Thank you guys so much. I'm super excited about the variety of interests and, 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 and activities that our panelists do on campus and study. So I think this is gonna be a really great panel. First, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about Northwestern. And we cannot talk about Northwestern without talking about our trifecta of a location. To start off, we have a gorgeous college campus. It's about a mile long, which means you can get from one end to the other in about 10 minutes, which I promise you is very helpful in the colder winter months. Plus we have a beautiful lake um, and our lake fill on one side of campus, which is a beautiful green space. Then we have the wonderful town of Evanston. It is the dining capital of the North Shore, if that intrigues you at all, but otherwise it is a really fantastic community. Game days are really special because not only students are wearing purple, but people who live in Evanston really come out to support our school. It's a really great college town environment to be in. And to finish off our trifecta, we have the wonderful city of Chicago, just a few miles away. Um, Chicago is a wonderful city, which has so many different cultural and um, Come and artistic events that you can go to, whether it's sports or a musical or a play, um, but you also have the resources of Chicago from its amazing um, Fortune 500 companies to research labs, um, even our um, medical and law school campuses are downtown. So we really get to utilize the Chicago resources as a Northwestern student. But something that is just as unique as our location is our academic schedule. Now, some of you might be more familiar with a semester schedule, but here at Northwestern, we're on the quarter system. 
which means there are technically four quarters, only three of those are academic quarters where you're taking classes. We have fall, winter, and spring, and you would have a summer quarter where you are allowed to take classes, but you don't have to. You can take an internship, maybe work a job, or just go home and watch some Netflix. Um, but on a quarter system, you get to take four classes a quarter or 12 classes a year versus the five classes a semester, 10 classes a year at a semester school. So you really get the opportunity to take more classes and you can use that to explore a variety of interests and pick up an extra major or a minor, or you can really dive deep into an area of study that you're super excited about. And that really allows us to explore so many different things. Um, and that is helped by our six school model here at Northwestern. So because we have a six school model, students are allowed to take advantage of any class across those six schools. Um, let's go through those really quick. We have our Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, which is the largest undergraduate college here at Northwestern. It has your majors from biology and psychology to English creative writing. We also have the McCormick School of Engineering, which is where I'm getting my master's degree. Um, and that focuses on whole brain engineering. Um, so you use that creative and analytical sides of your brain together. Then we have our School of Communications, has everything from theater um, to communication sciences and disorders. That has some of our more famous alumni like Julie Louis Dreyfus and Seth Meyers. Then we have our Bean and School of Music, which is a conservatory style learning facility where you also get that liberal arts education that comes with Northwestern. Next, we have our School of Education and Social Policy or SESB, the smallest but mightiest school. It is the most transferred into school with majors like learning sciences. Then we have our Medill School of Journalism, Media and Integrative Marketing Communications, the longest name for one single major, journalism. And it's a really fantastic journalism program. You can take classes across any six schools, regardless of your major. Some people make it their goal to do that as their time as an undergrad. Um, but regardless of what you are looking to study, Northwestern has a way for you to do so. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about before we get into our questions and our panel is admissions and financial aid, which is an important part of thinking about Northwestern. So to start us off, we have two dates in terms of applications. Early decision is November 1st and regular decision this year is January 3rd. Early decision is a binding agreement for people who are sure that they want to come to Northwestern. And it says that if you are admitted to Northwestern via early decision, you will be attending. If that sounds like too much and you're not sure that you were born to be a wildcat just yet, you can apply through regular decision and you will receive your admissions decision by April 1st. In either case, we accept the common application or the coalition application. Um, we also use a holistic application review process, which means your application is read in the context of your high school. So the materials that we're looking for in an application, first of all, is your high school transcript. Next is your school report. That is something that your counselor or school guidance counselor will send in to us. And that's where the contextualization comes into play. Your school is gonna send us a report so we understand what classes were offered to you, if there were APs available to you, average GPAs and things like that. So we can understand you in the context of what you were given. That We can't compare someone who had every AP available to them and someone who went to a high school that offered no APs. That's not fair. So we really consider you in the context in which you are coming from. Next is your essays. There is a common app and a coalition application essay. That's a general essay you'll send to every school. But additionally, our application has a Northwestern specific question, the why Northwestern. In 350 words, you have to answer just that. Why do you wanna be at Northwestern? The essays are a really great time to get your voice across because it's really the only time in the application that we get to hear from you. I do just wanna take a moment to uh, emphasize that on this year's Common App and Coalition application, towards the end of the application, there will be a section for anyone to fill out how COVID-19 has impacted either their academic or financial um, experiences, and we want to make sure you have a space to put if that has impacted you at all, and you will. Next, you have two letters of recommendation required, one from a high school guidance counselor and one from a core subject teacher. I think an important piece of advice is ask a teacher that actually knows you. When I was in high school, I wanted to just ask the, you know, the teacher that everyone thought was fun and everyone liked the most, but they might not have the best relationship with you. So pick someone who's going to strengthen your application. And finally, it's important to note we are test optional this year. 
Um, so we will not be requiring any test scores. However, normally we accept either the ACT or the SAT as part of your application. Last bit of information I wanna throw at you is financial aid, which is also an important aspect of applying to colleges. We are very fortunate at Northwestern to say that we can meet 100% of demonstrated financial need entirely loan free. You will fill up the free application for federal student aid and the CSS profile. When you do those, you will receive an EFC or estimated family contribution. Your financial aid package will be the entire cost of attendance, including books, living, dining, everything, minus your estimated family contribution. And that will be entirely made up of grants, scholarships, and the occasional work study. For domestic students, we are need blind, which means we do not take into account your EFC when we're reviewing your application. If you're curious about what the cost for attending Northwestern would be for your specific family, you can check out our um, financial aid calculator on the Northwestern financial aid website. <sighs> now that I've talked at you for a few minutes, we want to spend the rest of your time answering your questions and anything you want to know about Northwestern. So if you have any questions about anything I've mentioned or something I didn't, drop them in the chat, please. Um, but first, I want to learn a little bit about everyone's favorite class that they've taken so far at Northwestern. Val, do you think you can start us off telling us your favorite class that you have taken so far at Northwestern? Sure, yeah, um, I'd love to. I think my favorite class has been um, one of my MSS core classes was the second part of econometrics, which is applied econometrics. And we were just shown essentially how to apply everything we'd learned to current research studies. And our professor was just amazing. His name was Gaston. He was absolutely amazing, taught everything really well and really understandable, which is sometimes where because things are so complicated, it gets a little confusing um, and everything was just so relevant because it was all in studies and research that was going on at the moment and I could read about it in the newspaper any day. So I really liked that class. Um, yeah, and I'll pass it over to Ella. My favorite class I've taken at Northwestern was called Psychology and the Law. So it was the intersection of my one of my majors and my minor, which is psychology. And it was an amazing class. We looked at um, psych studies of aspects of the law. So whether it's eyewitness statements or um, mostly we focus a lot on eyewitness statements. And the reason that's coming up is because we once did a, a test in class where my teacher ordered Giordano's to class and we were also shocked. And then after the um, delivery man left, we all had to write down exactly what he looked like. And then she showed us a picture of what he looked like and we were completely off showing that the reliability of memory is really not there for eyewitness statements. That was my most memorable and favorite class. And um, Emily. Yeah, so my first, my favorite, my favorite class I've taken at Northwestern actually came pretty early during my first year. Um, so all McCormick students take a class called Design Thinking and Communication. Um, so you take two quarters of it and you're given a design project and a team um, and you go through the full design process uh, with that project. Um, so one of my projects um, was to design um, a hair tie for a little girl who had extradactyly, which means that she had one digit on each hand. So her goal was to use, independently put her hair up in a, into a ponytail. So that was our design challenge. Um, so we, you know, you do user testing and research and all that kind of stuff um, and really get from like the very beginning of, of a project to the very end where we actually gave her um, the, the tool to use. Um, so it was a great class to take. Uh, I came in and wasn't really sure that I wanted to take or wanted to be an engineer. Um, so it was a great way to kind of dive in and, and really do a hands-on project really early on. And then I'll pass it to Nolan. Thank you, Emily. Uh, this is a really tough first question, um, but I just took a class class uh, winter quarter called Exploration of Humanities. And it was taught by President Morton Shapiro and Gary Saul Morrison, two of the brightest minds on campus. And it was a class that taught us how 
um, various disciplines can learn from each other and that answers to the questions that we have can't be answered by one particular subject, but by a culmination of your knowledge of every subject. And Morty being an economist and Morrison being uh, a literature and Slavic professor, they debated almost every day on a single topic and it changed. Uh, Morty took the economic side and uh, Morrison took the literature side. And it was just fascinating to see how how amazing um, just learning new topics and different ideas is when you're able to open your mind to various different ways of learning um, and just studying. So that was my favorite class. It got pretty heated with discussions, but Morty and Morrison were just animated and lively and I never had a dull moment in that class. And I want to pass it off to Jenea. One of my favorite classes I took at Northwestern was um, last fall, it was called Evolutionary Medicine, and it's an anthropology class taught by Christopher Kazawa, who is one of my favorite professors. He was just like really inviting in the class. Like sometimes the material could get a little challenging. Um, a lot of times the readings would kind of fly over my head, but he was al always um, really like understanding and really welcoming um, and encouraged us to ask questions, which was really great. Um, but the class kind of delves into the way that humans evolved and why that um, why the way we evolved results in the health issues that we see today. And I learned a lot from that class. It was really great. And the people in the class were also amazing. It was fairly small, I think about like 15 students. So there was a lot of really great discussions um, going on every day and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's crazy that you said that, Janae, because that was actually my favorite class that I've taken at Northwestern as well. It's the class that made me decide to be an anthropology major. Um, so I think that's really cool that you've also taken it. Um, but as you can see, there are so many different types of classes at Northwestern, regardless of your interests or what you're excited about. But speaking of classes and, you know, kind of in-class experiences, Val, is the atmosphere on campus more collaborative or competitive? Um, I would definitely say collaborative. I think, um, I mean, Emily talked about DTC a bit, but that's all done in groups. I think in a lot of my classes, similar to that, I've had experiences where everything is done in groups, problem sets, um, homework, really anything. Professors encourage it, um, even say your life will be easier if you do it together. So I think the school really pushes a collaborative environment and when it comes to job recruitment, really anything, I've always found that my peers are there to support me and guide me along the way. Awesome, thank you, Val. I wanna take a moment to kind of ask some specific questions about some of the programs you guys are involved in. So Nolan, first, can you tell us a little bit about the balance of liberal arts and your major focused classes as a first year student in the School of Communications? For sure, yes, I would love to speak about that. Um, so theater specifically, but even just, um, even with ra um, radio, TV, film, RTVF as well, um, you do have certain first year classes that you have to take. Your theater seminars, your um, first year production classes in RTVF, um, there will be a time in your schedule in any quarter for you to take those classes um, because they are required. But because we are a liberal arts university as well, the School of Communication does require us to take classes outside of the School of Communication and outside of the discipline that we want to major in. Um, my first quarter was a mixture of theater classes as well as computer science courses and math courses um, because they really want us, they meaning Northwestern in general and the School of Communication, want us to have a well-rounded education, both supplementing our arts education, as well as those that lie in other humanities and other disciplines. Um, so your advisor, who you will work closely with in deciding and making up your schedule, will set it up so that way you do take those required classes, but also classes outside of the purview of just RTVF or of just theater. You will definitely have um, a huge mixture of those different courses by the time you graduate from Northwestern. Thank you so much, Nolan. Another program specific question is going to Emily, and this is a super fun one for anyone in our McCormick School of Engineering. Emily, what is whole brain engineering? So whole brain engineering is the idea that you're using both sides of your brain. Um, so kind of the more creative side, um, along with the more analytical technical side. Um, so classes, like I mentioned, like DTC, design thinking communication, are classes where you really can 
put that to the test and really work on that. Um, you know, it's, I feel like it's easy when you're doing like math problems or science problems to just kind of get tunnel vision and to just think about, you know, the problems specifically that you're looking at. Um, but I think the idea of Holborn engineering helps you to kind of put it all into perspective. Um, so you can really focus on developing your um, problem solving skills as opposed to just being able to, you know, answer one specific problem. Um, so for example, in DTC, um, we, you know, went through this whole design process and developed a product, um, like a hands-on product um, and worked in the shop um, and all that stuff. But we also ended up writing a technical report. Um, so, you know, the writing element was definitely there. Um, we gave tutorials to the users and different things like that. So um, it definitely, I like the idea of whole brain engineering to kind of take the work that we're doing and put it in perspective so you can see the bigger picture. Awesome, thank you so much, Emily. Janae, can you tell us um, what the JR or Journalism Residency Program is about? Yeah, so Journalism Residency is the part of um, your Medill degree. So essentially you spend a quarter working for a publication or some people do um, their JR at a marketing firm. So you have several options for whatever track you wanna follow um, in the journalism field and you take that quarter, you're essentially just working the entire time. Um, it's a really great experience. And I know a lot of people have um, done their JR at places like the Washington Post or Google or Apple, like really amazing companies. And you get that hands-on experience because you're a part of the newsroom. So you're working and writing every day and you get the opportunity um, before you graduate. So it's definitely something you can, um, something that recruiters will appreciate once you graduate. Awesome, thank you so much, Janae. Um, Ella, so you're in the School of Education and Social Policy and you are studying LOC, but do you know anything about the social policy program in our School of Education and Social Policy? Slash, could you talk a little bit about the general classes you have to take in our School of Education and Social Policy? Totally, um, so a lot of the classes in um, the School of Education and Social Policy are a lot smaller and collaborative based. So rather than like sitting in a lecture hall, People are sitting in pods in, um, in like um, just classroom desks that are pushed together and everyone's like working throughout the classes. A lot of the classes I've taken are lo longer blocks. So teachers will break them up. So there's like significant portions that are just like you're working together as a group. And that can also be um, very um, beneficial to like working experiences. SESB also has uh, similar to the JR. Um, it's called the practicum, which is a one quarter when you work. Um, so going for social policy, so I'm in learning organizational change, but I actually did my practicum in DC, which is where a lot of social policy students um, do their practicum. And um, the social policy classes are focused a lot on just how policy changes, like whether it's starting just with the ideas and like how that builds and how um, people work together um, and just kind of how change happens. Um, which is really cool. I was working at US Fish and Wildlife, so that was um, very social policy focused. Um, and it was great because I got to do a collaboration of two different concentrations in SESB, despite being in um, learning organizational change. Awesome, that sounds like such a cool experience. Um, someone asked in the chat about paleontology at Northwestern and I figured I'd give that a shot as an anthropology major. Um, at Northwestern, anthropology is broken into four different disciplines, biological, uh, cultural, linguistic, and archaeology. And archaeology is probably where you would find the most paleontology. You learn a little bit about um, going on digs and other things in that area, and it's definitely the most similar. Um, I have a few people who were in the anthropology major with me who are going to graduate school for paleontology specifically. Um, funny enough, paleontology is actually what they call archaeology specifically um, in the UK. Um, and we kind of co-opted that in America to talk about dinosaurs. Um, so it's a very popular gradu graduate program, but in the United States, it's not a very popular undergraduate program. But studying archaeology or anthropology at Northwestern, you can definitely go on to be a paleontologist. Another program specific question, the last one for a bit. Nolan, how often do non-performing arts majors participate in musicals and plays? And is that open to everyone on campus? 
OMG, uh, it happens all the time. Um, there are many shows that I've been in that have people who major in political science or are on the pre-med track uh, that aren't uh, specifically theater majors, especially the Dolphin Show is a great example of it. The Dolphin Show, for those who may not know, is the largest student produced musical in the country. Um, and we involve students from across Northwestern, not just performers. Even the Wirt shows um, feature students who aren't theater majors, who aren't even in the music theater program, but people who just want to perform. The same goes for dance opportunities as well. If you're a dancer, um, but aren't in any dance classes because you can't get into them because you aren't in the program, there's um, Tonic Tap, which is a, a tap dancing group. There's Graffiti, there's Boom Shaka. So there are various opportunities for students to perform that may not be here as a performing arts student. I think Simone froze. Hi everyone, I'm going to step in very quickly uh, for those who aren't aware because I just showed up on camera. Um, my name my name is Mauricio Gonzalez. I am an assistant director of undergraduate admission and I will be, for the meantime, as we figure out what happened with Simone, co-moderating the panel at this moment. But yeah, uh, I absolutely agree with all of that. That was one of my biggest questions about performing arts while looking at Northwestern back in my day. I graduated like two years ago. So yeah, so I'm really glad that there's those opportunities available. But Simone is back, so I will disappear again and I will pass it off over to her. Thanks, Simone. Thank you, Mauricio, for stepping up. Um, I just installed new Wi-Fi, um, but at least it kind of works. So there we go. Um, that is part of being virtual, both in classes and during these panels, you know, life happens. But I appreciate you all for helping out and thank you, especially Mauricio. Um, and apparently Nolan, you did a great job answering because of how Happy Mauricio was with that answer. So let's move on a little bit and talk about some of the resources available to Northwestern students. And Val, I'm gonna to come to you first. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, internships and the job field as a Northwestern student? Of course, I'd be happy to. So um, I think the biggest resources on campus is the Northwestern Career Advancement, um, NCA is what we call it. It's the Career Center. They will provide anything from interview prep to looking over your resume and cover letters to even figuring out what you want to apply to or strategies on like how to best approach a job fair. I've honestly found them re their resources very helpful. When I found my internship abroad, they helped get all my paperwork in order um, so that I could study there and could get or work there and have my visas done. Um, additionally, I would say just the people. So both students, teachers, professors alike, they're all huge resources in the alumni network of Northwestern students. I know um, I cased and like did prep for interviews, both practical interviews and like personality interviews with friends and um, students from my programs. I also had multiple professors who were happy to meet with me, talk for an hour and give me emails of people to connect with and talk to and reach out to. Um, so all around, I've had a great experience reaching out to them. And then as people have mentioned, there are plenty of opportunities. Um, the journalism residency and uh, the SPESB practicum are great opportunities to get out into the job market, as well as in Weinberg, we have the Chicago Field Studies Program. So um, the NCA will help you find a job and intern downtown in Chicago for a quarter while getting class credit simultaneously. So it's a great opportunity to really explore what Chicago has to offer. But yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Val. I love that you talked about Chicago Field Studies because I think that's one of the best programs Northwestern can offer its undergraduate students in terms of really learning what you want in a career. Um, another popular um, opportunity for undergraduates is research. So Ella, can you tell us how easy it is for first years to get involved in research on campus? It is like crazy easy to get involved on, um, in research, even if you're not a STEM major. Um, my research advisor actually reached out to me after taking um, her class. She was a TA um, 
in a in a class and she reached out to me at the end of the class and she asked if I wanted to join their lab and I was like of course I didn't even think I was going to end up doing research in college um but so I work in a lab that um studies fake news um I actually got to present last year at the Chicago undergraduate research symposium um which was an amazing opportunity again something I didn't think that I was going to um do in college because I wasn't a STEM major and I have tons of friends who um also do research in non-STEM um, uh, focused areas. For example, my friend Ben, he studies um, corruption in FIFA. Um, so in soccer, which is very, I didn't think that could be something that people would research um, in college, but yeah. So there are tons of different topics. It's super easy. Oftentimes like professors are looking for undergraduate research. There's a uh, 3.5 billion dollar, million dollar um, budget for undergraduate research specifically. So professors are like actively looking. Um, and it's as easy as just emailing a professor and saying, like, I'm interested in what you're doing. Do you need any help? Awesome, thank you so much. Another popular question is study abroad. And I know a fair amount of people on this um, panel have studied abroad, but Emily, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to get involved with study abroad and how easy it is for students? Absolutely. So study abroad is something that a lot of people on Northwestern's campus um, are very interested in, which I think is awesome. I studied abroad last summer in London. Um, so Northwestern has a series of programs that you can get involved with um, and they kind of set it all up for you. Um, so basically, you know, you can pick a place in the world and Northwestern probably has a, has a program um, for, for that. So um, a lot of people will study abroad during fall quarter, um, which is kind of a great time to kind of get that in, um, or people will also do it during the summer like I did. Um, so yeah, to just touch on like my personal experience, um, I also, I did an unaffiliated program, so it wasn't um, affiliated with Northwestern, um, but I was still able to transfer that credit um, to go towards my degree, which was awesome. Um, so yeah, so it's a great opportunity to um, you know, gain experience in a completely new place and a completely new culture. Um, but also, you know, all the while you're still building your way towards your degree. Um, so it's definitely something that a lot of people gain a lot of valuable life experience from. Thank you so much, Emily. And I know that like I said, a lot of people at Northwestern do have the opportunity to study abroad, but we have a fantastic global learning office and they have a really fantastic website. So if you just look up global learning Northwestern, their website has some more information on the programs we offer and probably any other answers to the questions you may have. One final resource I wanna talk about is the staff and faculty at Northwestern. So Nolan, can you tell us a little bit about how accessible the staff and faculty are to students at Northwestern? Oh yes, um, they are very accessible. Um, the faculty to student ratio is six to one, which means that even in and outside of the classroom, um, there are always ways to get to know professors. Uh, I think I said that ratio wrong at student to faculty. I may have said faculty to student, but student to faculty ratio is six to one. Um, they host office hours. Um, you can go into their office and get help on um, topics that you're discussing in class, or even just to get a mentor to just talk about life because they're very there, they're accessible and they're open to you to be able to do that. Um, just like uh, I believe Ella mentioned earlier with research, um, Research is another way for students to get close to faculty members. Um, so they are very accessible. They're there because they want to teach you. They want you to learn and they want to um, they, they, they want to be there for you as much as they can. So in my experience, my advisors, faculty members, my own teachers have been every uh, have been there every step of the way. That's so great to hear. And I can say that I've also had that experience at Northwestern. So it's good to hear that that is a universal experience for Northwestern students. Now, moving away from resources, I wanna take a moment to ask Val kind of a specific question about the international experience. So Val, how, do Northwestern, how does Northwestern make sure that international students um, are accommodated during breaks? Um, do they have to go home or is there something that they can do to find them space? Yeah, of course. Um, so, Northwestern does keep dorms open and options for students during breaks. Off the top of my head, I cannot really think of which, I know it depends on which break. Thanksgiving, for sure, everything's still open, spring break as well. Um, I know winter break tends to be a little more chaotic. Um, but besides that, I do think the international community 
community is very, very tight knit. So when I've had a lack of a place to go or somewhere to stay, I know I've had plenty of couches or rooms I can stay in from our friends. And that really just starts day one because we do have an international student orientation where all of this is covered your first year um, and where you are get help with visa stuff and stuff like that and the international office is also always there for you you can walk in anytime and ask any question you have but sorry going back to the original question dorms are open and food is open during breaks um, and if it's not the community will always be there for you awesome that is great to hear thank you Val um, now I have some fun questions to ask people. So first, Janae, what is your favorite student organization or club on campus? And can you start your own? Um, well, yeah, I will start with the first part of that question. Um, my favorite student organization on campus that I'm a part of would have to be a &O Productions. So a &O is kind of like an entertainment group on campus. We don't perform, but we bring a lot of like um, we host a lot of concerts and speaking events, comedy uh, shows every um, quarter. And so that's something that's been like really fun to be a part of and like taking in like student voices and kind of deciding like which talent we want to bring. Um, so that's been really cool. And it's also a really close knit community. Um, so like my first year in a and I've met a lot of my really close friends there. And I think um, like student organizations are also just a really great way to meet people. And there's really an organization for anyone, like for anything. There's like a happiness club, like there's like 500 clubs. And if, you know, out of that 500, there isn't one that you really like, you can just start one. Um, and so I'm a part of uh, Dalai Durrell Latin Dance Company and that started um, last year, like last fall, um, just because students felt like there wasn't Latin dance represented on campus. And so they started their own club. And all you really need is, you know, someone to start the club with and a uh, faculty advisor to kind of like give you guidance for things. Um, but it's really easy to start a club. And I know a couple of my friends have also started clubs too. Awesome. Yeah, I have a few friends who started clubs too. And like Janae said, there are so many that hopefully there's one that you are really excited about. But if not, you do have that option. Um, another question we get often, Emily, this is going to you. Can students find a work-life balance? And what is that like at Northwestern, especially as an engineer? Absolutely. Um, that was something that I was, I guess, nervous about coming in, um, just because you know, you're coming into a completely new environment and you're on your own for the first time for a lot of people. Um, so I've definitely you know, been able to find that balance um, that works for me. I think for every person, it looks a little bit different. Um, you know, in terms of being social, working, and then having time to yourself, um, or and working whether that's working a job or any or just you know working on your schoolwork. Um, so I think you know it takes effort, but it's definitely you know doable for every person. And again, it looks a little bit different for every person. Um, so you know, finding libraries and spaces on campus that you love. Maybe you love to work in Norris, which is our student center on campus. Um, there's tons of different, you know, actual physical places um, to to get your schoolwork done. Um, so I think, you know, it's as with everything else, it's definitely an effort, but um, you know, you have to be intentional about how you're spending your time. But I do think it's one of those things that you kind of get the hang of it as you go. Um, particularly with McCormick, um, yeah. So you know, a lot, especially I think with McCormick, a lot of the classes that you take are. Um, you know, related to your McCormick degree, um, it may be more so than in some other majors. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of your classes will be engineering focused. Um, but again, I think um, North Northwestern has a, th a theme um, program that you have to fulfill um, to graduate from McCormick. Um, so it's seven classes um, in, the in the humanities that you have to take. Um, so basically, you know, we want you to be balanced. We want you to be able to take classes that interest you. So I think that's a great way to kind of step back and look at the bigger picture and say, okay, you know, engineering analysis is great. Um, maybe I want to take a class in, um, you know, astronomy or something like that. So um, it's a great way to kind of develop that balance in your schedule um, that will also help you kind of derive that balance um, in kind of your larger life outside of the university. Thank you, Emily. Um, another fun question for Ella, what is your favorite Northwestern tradition? Um, my favorite Northwestern tradition is painting the rock. So there's a rock in um, 
the middle of three of the academic buildings on campus, on South Campus. And it actually didn't used to be a rock, it used to be a fountain that was donated by an outgoing senior class. And then one fateful night, a group of um, students painted what was a fountain because it actually, it broke, the, the pipes froze in the winter and it, um, the fountain was rendered useless. So they like kind of pushed it to the side because they couldn't get rid of it because it was a gift. So, but then some students painted it and then that started the tradition of painting the rock. And there's three um, rules for painting the rock. One is it has to happen in the cover of darkness to keep with the tradition of um, those, that group of first year students who painted it. Um, two is you have to guard it for 24 hours before painting the rock. And so that often happens with student groups and people will split it up. So like even in the depths of winter, you'll see like a little tent next to the rock and students will be huddling there guarding the rock for the 24 hours. Um, and so it's really, really fun. I once had a shift from two to 3 a.m. and I was sitting there and me and another person, we had Burger King because why not? It was cold out. Um, and it's really fun. And there's a, a, a a 24 hour um, surveillance camera of the rock. So you can watch it at any times. And it's a great um, testament for free speech on campus and also a place for students to promote events on campus. Thank you, Ella. Um, Nolan, can you tell us a little bit about the political climate here at Northwestern? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll briefly touch on it. Um, but we do have uh, clubs for uh, those who are Democrats and Republicans on campus, like Northwestern Democrats and Northwestern Republicans, because of how diverse we are as um, a university and a city in the city of Evanston. There are many different ideologies and of course people come from different places uh, so they believe in lots of different things. Um, in my experience at Northwestern uh, the students are prone to listen more instead of just react more. Um, so I've had some very insightful conversations with people who do believe different things than I do and vice versa. Um, it's um, you know, some debates can get, you know, a bit heated just because that's what debates are. But for the most part, um, I have felt protected here. Um, I'm sure others have felt protected here as well and that there is a space to share political beliefs um, while also, you know, maintaining the friendships and the, the community aspect of Northwestern. Thank you, Nolan. I also want to suggest if you are curious about what Northwestern students are actively talking about in the discussions that are happening, to look up the Daily Northwestern newspaper and our North by Northwestern magazine. Both of those are really going to have, um, you know, different articles about what Northwestern students are talking about and thinking about. So I think that's a great way to understand the climate of Northwestern's campus. Um, switching gears a little bit, Val, what is your favorite part of Evanston? Yeah, awesome. Um, I love the lake, Phil. I think it is a popular um, option, but truly just having the view of Chicago, that much green space on campus and places to hang out it is one of my favorite places to walk around. Um, and when it's nice out, you do see students flock to the lake like no other. And I love that as a sign of spring at Northwestern. Definitely, 100%. The first warm day of spring quarter, it's a whole different feeling on the lake, Phil. Um, I think it's pretty magical. Um, similarly, Emily, what is your favorite part of Chicago and how realistic is it that you, that Northwestern students get down there? Absolutely, so Northwestern students definitely go to the city. Um, it's a great resource um, for everything, you know, from the museums and the, like, the artistic culture um, to going, you know, just for fun, maybe for your birthday dinner, you know what I mean? So um, it's definitely a great resource to have and something that I think I underestimated coming in, um, how great it would be as a resource. Uh, one of the other things that I think about Chicago is great is that so many, um, you know, so many Northwestern students and do end up in Chicago after um, school. Um, and so there's a great alumni network um, in the city. Um, so a lot of recruiting and different things like that um, will happen straight from Chicago. Um, so like, for example, I'm gonna be in Chicago next year full time, um, which is exciting. So it's a, great, um, it's a great place where you can kind of go down there, go to a museum, um, kind of experience that um, and really kind of get a feel for kind of that, you know, the big city. Um, and then, you know, return back to Evanston, which is kind of a, you know, a smaller town um, at the end of the day. So um, it's been great. Um, and I definitely think it's very accessible as a student here. Um, so 
we have um, the L, which takes you straight into the city um, in about 40 minutes. Um, and then the Metra is a little bit faster and it gets you there in about 20. Um, so it's definitely um, you know, not difficult to get there um, if you just take the train, um, I guess, you know, in maybe pre-COVID times. Um, but it's definitely, you know, a great resource and, and very accessible uh, to all students. Yeah, definitely. We also have an intercampus shuttle um, that I like to highlight. So with your wild card or your student ID, this bus takes just Northwestern students and faculty from our Evanston campus to our downtown medical and law school campuses, which is just one block from Magnificent Mile, a really popular shopping district right in the heart of the downtown area of Chicago. It makes also a stop at Loyola. So it really does allow you to um, transport pretty easily between the two. And I'm a little biased because I am from Chicago. So I thought that I was going to get into Chicago all the time. But the times that I found myself most utilizing the city is when Northwestern, you know, paid for me to go do an activity or an excursion there. So I've gone with my res hall to a Bulls game. Um, I went and saw a Steppenwolf production. Northwestern paid for the class of 2021 to go see Hamilton for free. I'm in the class of 2020, which means I didn't get to go, but they took some of them. Um, so that's a really fun experience as well. Um, speaking of res life, Janae, tell us about res life at Northwestern. Yeah, so at Northwestern, um, typically your first two years, most people live on campus. Um, and so I lived on campus my first two years. Um, it was really like I had a lot of fun living on campus. I live with a roommate both years. Um, my first year I lived in Willard, which is a residential college. Um, and so it was a little bit more um, programming heavy and compared to my second year living in Allison um, Res Hall. Um, and, but there was still programming available. Um, so we do have like a faculty and resident and they are there kind of just to like get to know the students, help you kind of like figure out some things, you know, if you just like want someone to talk to you about like, I don't know, like how to do your, your laundry. Um, they're there, RAs are also there for that, um, but they also host events. So you get like snacks. Um, we have like a painting event in Allison, which is really fun. Um, and so, it kind of is a great way to like build community and get to know the people who are also living on your floor, people who are also living in your building. Just so when you're walking around, you see familiar faces. Um, and when you pick your roommate, you can pick a friend or go in blind. Um, I know a lot of people who like went in like not knowing their roommate, but they became like really great friends after. Um, but overall, like living on campus is actually pretty fun. You get to see your friends all the time. Um, you also have access to the dining halls and you can pretty much go in whenever you want, as long as they're open, get as much food as you want. Um, and for the most part, the food is pretty good. There's a lot of different options. So if like one dining hall doesn't have something you want, you can just go to a different one um, because there's no limit to like how often you can go into the dining halls. Awesome, yeah. And on the note of dining, we also have a variety of different restaurants um, on our Northwestern campus. One of my favorite places to eat is at the Kellogg Global Hub um, on our Northmost campus. It has a beautiful view of the lake um, and they have a cute little like dining hall in there um, with a really great sandwich shop. And then our Norris Student Center has a Starbucks, a Dunkin', um, some rotating food vendors, a mod pizza. So really great dining camp dining options on campus, both inside and outside of traditional dining halls. Um, next question is for Ella. Can you tell us a little bit about the mental health resources that students have on campus? Totally. So on campus, um, there's something called CAPS and they have, it's um, the Center for Counseling and Psychological Services. And they have an entire floor with a ton of stuff um, to help students um, with mental health support. Um, and that's honestly just one um, of the largest groups on campus. There's also other um, resources like um, CARE, which is the Center for Awareness, Response and Education on campus. Um, and those are like more formal um, resources that we have. Um, another thing that I really appreciate about um, the library during finals week is that they have like little brief, um, just activities like fun, lighthearted things that remind you to like, focus on your mental health and take a break from studying from finals. I know my favorite thing during finals is to always go and see the miniature horses that they bring to the library or they have like a hot chocolate cart. Um, so they're like little fun things like that. I also know that um, my first year, I had a ton of different re um, people that I could go to, whether it was academic 
advisors or my um, PA, which is um, your peer advisor. And they're kind of there to support you through the transition and um, help you in really any way that you need. Totally, thank you so much, Ella. And I also just wanna emphasize Chicago once again, we are lucky to live so close to such a wonderful city that has so many resources. So Northwestern students are also connected very frequently by people at CAPS and CARE to resources in the Chicagoland and Evanston area. Um, so you have a global, globally renowned city at your fingertips um, full of resources. Um, another fun question for Nolan, what would you say is the most unique feature of Northwestern um, that you wouldn't be able to get at another school? Oh, wow. Um, what do I choose? Um, I would say the ability to, I, I don't want to make this a super long answer, um, but I guess this goes into why I chose a school in the first place. Um, you can do whatever you want to do and not have to sacrifice anything in order to do it. So like, for example, I really wanted to go to a conservatory um, because I wanted the best acting training in the world. And I just wanted to do that. However, I realized Northwestern would give me that same level of acting training. And I wouldn't have to sacrifice that in order to do something else too. Because for two and a half years, I was computer science as well. And, you know, I'm a much better actor and a performer than I was at the beginning. And I know that would be the case if I chose another school. Um, but here I'm able to if I have an, an interest in something, I don't have to say no to it. I can try it, see if it works. And if it does, great, I'll do it. If it doesn't, then that's fine too. Everything is open to me. And I think you'd find that more at a school like Northwestern than other schools, which I think is what sets it apart from other universities. Awesome, thank you so much, Nolan. We have time for one last question and it's going to Val. Val can you tell us a little bit about the access students have to advisors and advising support? Of course, yeah. Um, you have so many advisors here at Northwestern. Um, you first get an advisor for your home school. So that's your go-to, your first advisor. But then you get an extra advisor for every major, minor, or certificate you tack on. Um, and a lot of people at Northwestern study more than one thing. I do think the stat is 70%. So most people have at a minimum three advisors. We also have advisors for any pre-professional track, so pre-med, pre-law, and any research you want. So if you want a research advisor, you can get that. So again, yeah, you always have any advisor to choose from. Really, um, which one you choose to go to is kind of up to you, depending on which relationship you forge. It's kind of stronger and who you like best. I would also just add that your, if you were in Weinberg, the professor that teaches your first year seminar is your fall quarter and first year advisor. So you have that relationship built from your first day on campus, your first professor on campus throughout your college experience. And a lot of people forge very deep and very like helpful relationships with those advisors. Thank you so much, Val. Um, I definitely agree. I've had great relationships with my advisors at Northwestern. So that is almost all the time we have today. So I wanna end with our why Northwestern. So we're all gonna go around and talk about why we chose to come or to stay at Northwestern. And I'll start us off really quickly. Um, I lived in Chicago growing up. So I constantly compared every college I went to and visited to Northwestern. And it was really the people for me. Everyone I met on my tours was the kind of person I wanted to learn with and learn from. And that continued to be true when I came to campus, both professors and staff, as well as students. And I came for the people and I really stayed for the people. Emily, take it away. Absolutely. So you stole my answer a little bit. Um, to echo you, I would say the people. Um, I came in wanting to be around people who were really driven and really ambitious um, and you know were really smart but I also wanted to it was important to have a balance between that and people that were genuine um, you know I, I wanted that collaborative nature I wanted to you know feel like I was working with my peers um, you know and to be a part of a place where you know everyone's just genuine and real and um, and just kind and nice to each other um, and so I, I feel like I you know I saw that on my tour when I was here um, and that's definitely rung true 
you know, as I've kind of progressed throughout my experience in Northwestern. So for me, it was the people, um, but kind of finding that balance between, um, you know, smart, um, driven people, but people who also will have your back and, and are, are genuine and nice and kind. And I'll pass it to Ella. I, um, my reason that I chose Northwestern is because my tour guide um, was majoring in how to be a superhero. So what he did is he designed his own major. And I was just so drawn to the flexibility that Northwestern offers with the quarter system, because going into college, I really didn't know what I wanted to study. I had a bunch of different interests and a bunch of different things. And I wanted the chance to try all of those things out and then also still have the time to like focus in and add a minor, or add whatever. Um, and so I've really found that with the flexibility at Northwestern. And the reason that I stayed is for the deep dish. Um, I'll pass it to Val. Awesome, yeah. I'll kind of echo um, the previous two. I chose Northwestern for the people. Um, my kind of go-to quote is always Northwestern. And, and I think Chicago in general is a place where people take their work seriously, but not themselves. And that was really important to me. It was, Emily said it, and I'll kind of say it again, to be around people that are driven and want to pursue stuff really intensely, but at the same time can take a breath, relax, and just have fun. And I've truly found that here with all my friends. So I'm really glad. Um, and I'll pass it to Nolan. Thank you, Val. Uh, as a theater major, I had to put on a quick costume change. Um, but I, I kind of mentioned it before. Uh, I chose Northwestern just because I could um, become the greatest actor that I know I can be while also doing something else. I'm from Evanston originally, as I said before. So um, for the longest time, Northwestern was not my number one choice. I wanted to get away, uh, but I knew it had everything I needed in order to succeed and to be not only a better student, but a better human being. Um, and in order to be a better student, you must be a better human being, which is what Northwestern has taught me. Um, so that is why I chose the school and I will never regret that decision at all. Um, I like to pass it on to Jenea. So the reason I chose Northwestern is like something we've touched on throughout this panel, but just all the resources available from staff to professors to um, like all the learning opportunities. Um, something that really stuck out, stuck out to me and specifically was the journalism residency program and the Medill on the Hill program, which is a political reporting um, program in DC. And just um, having opportunities like that readily available and so accessible um, was something that I really enjoyed and just having the chance to get professional experience before graduating and kind of doing it at a low stakes um, environment and just like having people around me who are supporting me um, and really want to see me succeed was something that um, definitely stuck out to me and it's something that I've enjoyed a lot throughout my time at Northwestern. Well, I just want to thank all of the wonderful panelists who are here with me today and a thank you to everyone who joined and spent part of their Friday with us. Make sure you subscribe to this channel um, for more information about Northwestern and explore this channel because we filmed a bunch of information sessions, student panels and other specific um, panels. So if you have any more questions, hopefully they've been answered somewhere else on this channel. You can also find Northwestern admissions on Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat. Otherwise, have a great weekend and go Cats!